Hi everyone, Viking Guitar here, and today we are going to do a video on a very specific aspect of audio recording and production, and that is reamping guitar sounds specifically in regards to how different impulse response loaders handle different cabinet impulse responses. Now, uh, for those of you that have not done anything like this before, this might not be the best video to start with, but uh, the short version is you can have a dry recorded guitar sound, and you can run that through um, plugins for stomp boxes and for amp heads, and then you can also uh, run that sound through a cabinet simulator, um, which uh, loads impulse responses, which are individual wave files that represent a certain sound of a cabinet through a certain microphone. Now, there are a lot of different impulse responses out there, but we're not really focusing on those today. What we're focusing on are the impulse response loaders, which are those VSDs that uh, load in those wave files. I'm making this video because I'm always looking for the best way to maximize my uh, CPU usage, make my projects more efficient, so when I'm playing them back, it's not taxing my system too much. So the first question I had that I wanted to answer with this video uh, is of all of the different uh, impulse response loaders that I have, which one had the lowest footprint on my CPU usage? The second question I had was, do any of these impulse response loaders actually color the sound? In theory, they shouldn't color the sound at all, but I wanted to check that. And the third question I had was the one I use mainly, which is this uh, Poulin LeCab 2. It's a great piece of software, but there's one error I've encountered with it regularly that uh, has caused some problems for me. And I wanted to see if that same error was present uh, with the other loaders. So let's start at the top. First off, like I said, I've got my dry guitar sound going into this TSE overdrive pedal and then to, into this Ignite Emissary uh, free amp. Both of these are free plugins worth getting. They're absolutely wonderful. And uh, this track routes into all of these individual tracks, which basically represent different cab loaders all with the same impulse. This is the two off Prez High dot wave um, catharsis guitar cab impulse. You can find them online. They came out a long time ago. They're still some of the best out there. They're very much worth getting. Um, so each impulse response loader, we have LeCab with it. Then we have the Ignite Amps NAD IR Nadir. The third option we have is the Pulse Impulse Response Loader from Rosen Digital. Now, Rosen Digital doesn't exist anymore. They have rebranded as Lancaster Audio. And if you take a look, these are, uh, they look very, very similar. In fact, one might say they look identical, except for the Rosen and Lancaster audio thing. And on that basis, I almost didn't try both, but uh, I wanted to check them both out. And then lastly, we have the Recabinet uh, from Kazraga Audio um, Guitar Impulse Loader. So let's turn off all of these. Um, I'm, those of you that have done this before, you know what this is going to sound like, but right now we are just going to play this dry guitar sound through the TSE-808 and the Ignite Emissary without any impulse loading, and it's gonna sound like garbage, so be prepared. Here we go. <laughs> Sounds like shit. And that's because this is the sound of a guitar going into a foot switch, into an amp head, and into no speaker cabinet. So that's why it sounds that way. Um, we are going to turn back off the master send on this track because we don't want that sound going out through the master bus. All we want is it to go into these individual tracks. And uh, I put all of these in a um, amp sims folder here just as a way of keeping them together and as a way of applying one little EQ thing to all of it. I have a high pass around uh, 114, you know, and it slopes down, so it's really starting somewhere around 70. And then I notched out some disgusting fizziness up top. Um, these are not accurate mix settings for anything in a mix. They are just there. So since we're going to be listening to these a lot, that doesn't sound quite like garbage. What I'm going to do right now is turn on all of these subfolders. Each one has one cabinet uh, impulse response loader on it, um, but they all go through this thing here. So right now, since these are all muted, we should have no audio when I play back. Perfect, no audio. So what I'm going to do is go through and solo these individually so we can hear that they all pretty much sound the same. That was the first conclusion, is that uh, none of these are really coloring the sound in any way that I can discern with my ears. Now, I didn't uh, toss any real spectrum analyzer or anything on it to be super clinical, but uh, 
with just some volume adjustment to account for the fact that they're all outputting at slightly different volumes, they sound pretty much the same. So let's listen right now. <laughs> Okay, so LeCab, Nadir, the Rosen Pulse, the Lancaster Pulse, and the Recabinet Pulse all are generating, for all intents and purposes, the exact same sound with just a little volume adjustment. So that's good. One of those questions, do any of these color the sound of the amp or the impulse response or anything? We can answer that. They do not. So it comes down to an issue of which features we like and what the best footprint is. So let's look at these real quick. LeCab um, is really extensive. It allows you to have six different impulses. You can do phase inversion on them, solo the tracks, high pass, low pass, master output, all this stuff. Nadir allows for two cabinets. Uh, it does allow for uh, phase inversion. We have high pass, low pass, uh, delay, balance, quality routing, all that stuff. It's uh, pretty all-inclusive. It's just with two instead of the six. The Rosen Pulse looks like it is more or less the same as Nadir in terms of features offered. One thing I've noticed, it has this routing mono up here, but it doesn't have a quality control, um, which was present in Nadir, this quality from normal to high to extreme. I'm not sure exactly how much that's going to affect things in the real world, but as we could tell from listening to it, it doesn't, at least to a casual listen, sound like the normal quality of Nadir is any real difference in quality to LeCab or any of the others. So taking a look at the Lancaster one, exactly the same as the Rosen one. And then Recabinet here. Uh, Recabinet is interesting because it comes with its own um, group of impulses also. But once again, we have uh, two cabinets. We have a blend option. We can high pass and low pass. Um, we have some EQ controls here. And then under the options tab, we have more EQ controls. We have an input trim, output. Um, we can turn on and off the EQ and the dynamics. It has this dynamics knob. Um, so this has a lot of uh, features to it, but because we're not really doing a feature comparison so much as a, um, a CPU comparison, I've turned all of that stuff off. I don't want it coloring the sound. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to turn on all of them, which means that uh, as we play through here, this is going to uh, be playing all of them at the same time. And let me just mention, there's a little bit of delay in things. So the resulting waveforms are slightly uh, misaligned. So that's going to result in us hearing a bit of phase cancellation going on here. And it also means the volume, um, since we have all five of these going, is going to be pretty high. So I'm turning that down. There we go. That's a reasonable volume. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to pull up our performance meter in Reaper, which is great. You can go there through view performance meter. And it's going to show what's happening as we use the program here. So these represent tracks, CPU usage. We're just going to play this through, and we're going to take a look at the numbers here. So what we're really looking at is LeCab through Recabinet here. So let's start playing it. So right off the bat, you'll notice the LeCab is pretty high. Nadir and Recabinet were both, you know, floating close to 20. Pulse was around 30, 31. Um, the Rosen Pulse, the Lancaster Pulse was only at 0.09%. So what that tells me is that we're getting the same sound through Pulse as we are with any of the others, but at a fraction of the CPU use, at like one-tenth of the CPU use that LeCab has. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you is uh, I bounced all of these amped tracks out. Let's mute all of these and let's open up this folder. Now, like I said, we were hearing some phase cancellation. Looking at it, everything looks like they're aligned as they should be. But if we go look at the very beginning here, you'll see that in order to stack up and uh, here, let me increase the view height of these a bit. So I hand aligned these more or less so that they were, you know, as, as close to sample perfect as I was going to put time into. And in order to make that work, 
I actually had to adjust the start times a bit. Um, I used LeCab as the um, kind of the basis by which I adjusted everything else. So I had to move the Nadir stem forward a bit, the Rosen and Lancaster stems forward by almost identical amounts. And then I had to move the recabinet bounce further even more. Now, what that means is uh, in terms of rendering in real time, the leak cab was the slowest. Um, Nadir was the second slowest. Both pulses were more or less the same and right behind Nadir, but recabinet was actually the fastest in terms of how long it takes to run everything through and then print to the finalized waveform. And, you know, if we look at this right here and find, uh, let's find some peak we can look at. Like I said, once again, these are all more or less sample perfect if we follow down this line, but the recabinet one, if we move everything back, you know, this is that peak for Le Cab, and then it got there sooner for Nadir, it got there a little sooner for both pulses, and then it got there the soonest from recabinet. Is that going to mean anything in terms of the final mix? Probably not. If you're using the same impulse loader for everything, that should be fine. But if for some reason you are rendering uh, guitar amp tracks through different impulse loaders and uh, it's the same DI guitar, uh, you will want to go in and realign these things to make sure that uh, everything does line up properly so you don't end up with phase cancellation. Now, the last thing is this error I was talking about with LeCab. And... Basically, I'm not going to recreate it because it ends up taking a lot of time, but in LeCab, it looks for this WAV file at a specific place on your hard drive. And in this case, it is in my E colon, which is my main drive, program files, Reaper plugins, impulses. I have a subfolder for catharsis and then a subfolder in there. That's where this WAV file lives. Now, if I move that WAV file, what you would hope would happen is that Reaper would just open up and it wouldn't find that file and everything would be fine, except it would be unable to run the guitar line through it. That's not what happens. There's a bug with Poulin LeCab 2, at least the version I'm using, um, where it tries to look for it forever, 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 forever. It takes minutes and minutes to open the Reaper project, and when it does, no audio will come out. It was a nightmare. So what I did as a test is I removed LeCab from this project. I saved the project with just the remaining ones, I went into the folder, I renamed this to a different file name, so of course all of a sudden it, you know, Reaper doesn't recognize that as the proper path, and everything else loaded fine, it just didn't have that impulse response available, which is what I would be hoping for. So once again, um, another reason to move away from LeCab. I, I love the pool in stuff, and I really hope that uh, since I downloaded that software and the time of this video, he has fixed it because I love all of his other amp sims, and I've gotten a lot of good use out of LeCab. But based on that error that sometimes really ruins my afternoon, and based on the fact that it has 10 times the impact on my CPU processing as the Lancaster version of Pulse, I will probably from now on just be using Pulse for my guitar cabinet reamping. So once again, I'm Viking Guitar. If you have any questions, you can post them on this video. Uh, you can also email me. Um, be sure to uh, visit some of my uh, various online presences to listen to my music. And thank you for watching. Keep the world metal.